if you want to know how you can make a boss fight in Roblox Studio like this one, where the boss just attacks you whenever you get close to it, you're going to have to watch this video all the way to the end to find out exactly how to make this. Hey guys and welcome back to this brand new tutorial on my YouTube channel and in this tutorial we will be finishing up the boss fight series and the way we're going to do that in part 1 and 2 uh, we coded the boss attacks module script which contains all of the things the boss can do such as take damage, uh, walk to, rock debris, all of that stuff and in this tutorial we will be making um, the AI actually move around and um, actually execute all of those things before we start off, big shout out to Lua Scripts, my best friend. Um, he gave me all of the code for this tutorial. Without him, this tutorial would not have been possible. So big shout out to you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Lua. And uh, if you do like this video, give it a like. If you don't like it, give it a dislike. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on that notification bell and become a member if you want. Uh, without further ado, as I said, let's get right into the tutorial. So the script is smaller than previous ones uh, this one has like what is it 242 lines of code and mine only has like well this one has like a hundred so this tutorial should not take too long and uh, let's just immediately start off so in this script uh, we're going to start off with uh, waiting five seconds this gives the time for the game to load and for the players to load and everything else First of all, we need to require the run service. So local run service is because the game come on get service run service. We also need pathfinding service. So local pathfinding service is equals to game call on get service pathfinding service. The range uh, so local range is going to be a hundred when the range is like the. the um, uh, you know, you got a player, and the range between you and the boss is going to be like 110. And if you move into those 100, so between uh, 0 and 100, the boss will attack you. We need the boss humanoid, so local boss humanoid is equals to script that parent colon wait for child humanoid. Local boss humanoid root part is equals to script that parent colon wait for child humanoid root part and the humanoid and the humanoid root part are both essential items or well, uh, essential uh, descendants of the game local player in boss fight count is x to one so I think this uh, is for uh, like um, I think this is for how many people have to be in the boss fight in order for the boss to attack I think that's what it's for we also need the boss attacks module script, but it really has to be there. So local boss attacks is equal to require script dot boss attacks. So you got script dot boss attacks. We need the position of the boss. So local current position or well, current boss position uh, is equals to boss human at root part dot position. Before we continue, we need to make a function to check the distance between you and uh, the boss. Uh, but before we do that, boss human report colon set network owner nil. This makes the boss move a little bit smoother around you and all sorts of stuff. As I said, we need to check the distance from spawn now. So local function uh, check distance from spawn player. And then local character is equals to player that character. The humanoid of our player is local humanoid humanoid root part is equals to character colon wait for child, and it it should not pop up as like colon wait for you know over here if you do this, uh, it's gonna like pop up, but you may uh, it has to not pop up. So as you can see. Over here, it does not pop up. Wait for child humanoid root part. Uh, and after that, we need to calculate the position and magnitude. 
So local position magnitude is equals to the current boss position minus your position dot magnitude. And this allows us to calculate the distance between you and the boss. So if position magnitude, and this has to be lowercase, if position magnitude is below your range, so if you are in the boss, uh, we will return true, but we got a raycast first, so local raycast is equals to ray.new boss humanoid report dot position and then a calculation humanoid report dot position minus boss humanoid report dot position so you should have ray dot new boss human report dot position and then in brackets humanoid report dot position minus the boss humanoid report dot position and then in those two brackets so this one and this one in between dot unit times five thousand press enter and let's continue so we need to do local part comma position comma normal is it still workspace colon find parts on ray raycast script apparent false and true i have no clue uh i have no uh clue what it does which is the first base part of the terrain cell intersecting with the given data type array. Okay, well, um, if you know, if you want to know what this means, go to Lua Scripts, DM, and or something. So if part the parent is equal to character. So if the part the parent is the same as the character, then we will return true. So this is your check distance from spawn uh, function. Over here. Uh, we gotta type local table of players is an empty table because we will add the players to it. So now run service dot stepped colon connect function and then we gotta loop through every player. So for underscore comma player in pairs ga uh, well game colon get service players colon get players do so it's a little bit of a long code but game colon get surface players colon get players local character is it's the player dot character so the player has a character and we are uh, we are going to uh, set our character values to that local humanoid root part is actually the same as this one so you can just copy it boom so now we've got to check if there is a human root part, and if that's the case, uh, we have to calculate our position magnitude again. And to do that, we will literally uh, just copy this. But make sure to change current boss position to boss humanoid root part dot position. So you should have local position magnitude is equals to in square brackets or in brackets I mean boss humanoid root part dot position minus humanoid root part dot position dot magnitude so now if position magnitude is below range that means you are in the boss fight so if not table dot find table of players comma player dot name so if you are not in the table we will insert you into the table so table dot insert we're going to insert you in the table of players. We will insert what uh, we will insert you one time, and we will insert your name. And then we will uh, put this uh, one up. So now get out of this end. So get out of this function and type else. If you are not in um, in the range, uh, we will try and find you. So if table that find table of players come up player.name so if you are not in range but you are in the table we have to remove you so local found index is equals to table that find we have to find you in our table of players and we have to find your player.name after that we got to remove you 
and to do that we got to type table dot remove table of players and found index and found index is a u in the table and we are removing the the table of players and after that we are removing the found index equals u this is your run service uh, done and uh, now over here you want to type for underscore come up parts in Paris script that parent colon get children do so we are looping through the boss if parts colon is a so if it's a base part or parts is a mesh part so if if uh, the parts in the boss are a base part or a mesh part we will set the can collide to false so you can walk through the boss kind of sounds weird but you probably get the point at least I hope you do we need to do something pretty complicated uh, this is the last thing we got to do and that is loop so wall task dot wait 0.1 do so every 0.1 seconds this code will run so if not uh, hashtag table of players x six to zero do oh uh, well then uh, so if there are players in the table the boss is gonna do th stuff so local random table player the boss will attack one random player so local random table player is it the math dot random one out of our table of players because we gotta uh, let the boss kind of like randomize it so it does not target uh, like a banshee in phasmophobia that was really stupid but okay local found player uh, we are going to set this variable somewhere else we need to make a pcal and that means if it fails the code will still run so local success or well, local s comma e is it's the pcal function and our found player is it because the game come on get service players come on find first child we have to find someone and we have to find inside of our table so table of players and then square brackets math at random one out of our table of players we have to uh, our found player is going to be one out of the random of table players uh, yeah so if found player and for some reason I'm getting a lot of voice cracks and I'm really sorry so if found player is other than nil which means if your found player uh, so if there is a player I mean then our local player is because the found player and we're gonna do player because that sounds just way better um, local distance result is because the check distance from spawn player we're going to check the distance uh, with the player so if distance result is equals because it's true so this means if there is someone in the table and they are in the uh, range then we will start so local attack count is equals to zero and then if attack count is the same or above as five then the boss will kind of like tire uh, well the boss will kind of like be tired I mean and the way we're gonna do that is to say boss attacks boss attacks dot boss tired and uh, the boss is gonna be tired so we gotta fire the boss humanoid and the humanoid will like handle it up and then after that we will reset the attack count to zero and this means that the boss can um, continue doing its, its stuff again. But if it is not, uh, if the attack count is not higher or the same as 5, that means it's going to do something. So first of all, we've got to check if you're still alive. So if play, or well, um, if you are dead, I mean, if player, that character, that humanoid, that health is the same or below as 0, which means if you are dead, then the boss will kind of like walk away so boss attacks that walk to it's going to walk to the boss human report position to the current boss position 
and we'll fire the boss humanoid. To be fair, I don't really know why why I gotta type this, but get the point. But if you are alive, it's gonna do something to you. It will set the attack count. Uh, it will uh kind of like give the attack count a boost because it's gonna attack. So that's why it will um attack, and then the attack count will go up. Local returned match state returned match state. Uh, you just gotta leave it um uh, uh empty. Local random attack is because the math at random. There are four attacks, so that's why we will, we will loop through uh four of them. And now we gotta check what the value is. So if random attack. Is equal six to one. So um, if the random, if this one is going to be on attack one, uh, we will throw a rock. So returned match state. Is equal to boss attacks. Dot uh, throw rock. And we're going to throw the rock at our player. So player dot character. Uh, the boss humanoid is going to throw it, and uh, the boss humanoid root part. Uh, you have to wait one second for the boss to like wait, you know. Else if random attack is equal to two, then the boss will charge at you. So returned match state uh, is equal to boss attacks uh, dot charge. It's going to charge at player dot character. Uh, the boss humanoid root part is going to move, and the boss humanoid. I don't know why these two are switched, but these are the arguments you have to give. So you can copy this line, the return match state, so line 80. You can uh, copy it. After this, the boss will wait one second. Else if random attack, six, six, three. so if it's the third attack, then it's going to do this, but change charge to spikes. Like this. And then task wait one. And then lastly, else if random attack is equal to four, then um, instead of charging, we will do the high jump. And the boss will wait one second after that. So you should have throw rock, charge, spikes, and high jump. So make sure these two are switched around. So boss humanoid and boss humanoid root part. And then the rest is going to boss humanoid root part and boss humanoid. So you should have uh, boss HRP and boss uh, H uh, three times and uh, the other one should be switched around. So now you want to go over here to the task of weight. You want to go one, two, three, four. We're gonna go to line 91 and now type else. So if there is not a success or something, I believe, let me check this line. It said if found player, So if there is something wrong, we will print an error message, and the boss will just move away. So boss attacks. Dot walk to. Boss humanoid root part. Dot position. Current boss position, and boss humanoid. And you are done. This is the script. There's one last thing you gotta do, and that is literally test it out. So let's do that right now. So uh, I'm gonna move the boss a little bit more. I'm gonna click play right now. And after five seconds, it should move. Well, do stuff. Uh, if you get this error, attempt to index deal with chat it. Don't worry about it. I'll fix it in a little second. As you can see, the boss is kind of like animating. What happens if we walk up to it? Let's see if it does anything. Uh, it should do anything, but it should do something by the time being now, but it doesn't. Uh, maybe it's a little bit loaded in, weirdly. Let's just move the boss over here. And remove this. Oh, you don't have to do th that printing, it's just for me. So we have 11 errors. So we got attempted index nil with the wait for child at line 31. So let's go ahead to line 31 and fix it up. I have figured out why. 
You want to change get players to get children. And that will fix it up. Before we continue, um, let me just... So, you don't have to do that, but it's just for me. You want to go to the animate script, and you want to go to line 739. This one. And you just want to delete all of this. Just uh, this one, just delete it. It doesn't really matter. And then after that, you want to click play. And let's go ahead and see if this works. And maybe we encounter more errors, but we will gladly fix them. We got nine errors, so let's see. Again, line 31. That is a little bit weird. So let's see what the error is. It's the same error, I believe, but I don't know why that would not work. I'll figure it out. There's another thing. You want to change wait for child to find first child. I doubt it'll fix it, but uh, change or uh, remove the get service and change this to game dot players colon get children. I think that would kind of fix something. If it doesn't, let's see. Probably a bunch of errors. Yep, the same error. So let's see. Uh, maybe I got a fix. So this was a really weird error. I have been on a call for Lua for like 20 minutes trying to fix it. And turns out, uh, all you have to change, you have to change player and you just have to go to this line, line 35, and you want to remove player and boss fight count. You just want to remove that. I am unsure if there's anything else I changed because it has been like 30 minutes since I've touched the code. And uh, if you do have an error, please join my Discord server because I'm gladly going to help you out. Me and Lua will help you out and give you a working boss fight. So, um, it is recommended to put this at the top of your code. I think the rest will work though, because all I know is that I changed that. So, let's try it out right now. Let's move the boss fight a little bit away. Let's click play. And let's see if it works. Okay, so we are out of the range. As you can see, the boss fight is online. Let me give some, myself some speed. Some speed. Uh, humanoid. Let me give myself 50 speed. So if we move close to the boss, as you can see, it's going to start throwing things. Oh, and it's your... Oh, whoa! Holy moly. Okay, rock debris. Rock debris. Charging. Sometimes it's going to... Th oh, spikes. Rock. Charge. Please go high jump. Yes, high jump. Boom. Stay charging. Spikes. Rock. Spikes. Jump. Boom. Let's see if what it does more. Okay. Boom. If we move away from the boss, as you can see, it should stop. As you can see, it's doing nothing now because no one's near. If we move near it again, it's, yes, as you can see, it really works. So this is an amazing boss fight, and I want to thank Lua for helping me out and giving the code for this and helping me out with the final error. As I said, if it did not work for you, if you ran into some error, which is kind of unfixable, uh, join my Discord server. I'm not trying to be greedy or anything, but please join my Discord server because we will literally help you out. And if you did affect this tutorial, give it a like. If you don't like it, give it a dislike, subscribe to my channel, turn on post notifications, and become a member. Um, thank you, Lua. And all I can say is that my name is Newbie, and I say, peace out.